not the same world we left, and it may never be again, but you are the God of restoration. You, O oh God, make a way in the wilderness, a river in the desert. Where we have turned away, Lord, we come back and pray for healing for our land, for our people. We pray that you refresh our faith, our relationships, our communities, our purpose. We gather our courage, our hands will be strong, our voices will be loud, and we will carry the good news of your beautiful hope. As we step out, you are with us. Our work has just begun. Good morning and welcome. The God of restoration. I love that line. I thought that was a wonderful line. When I heard it, it just felt calming all over. Thank you so much for being here this morning. And things may look different. This morning, we are going to worship. We get to do that. We get to worship. We have the option of online. We have the option of being here. And re the reminder that in many countries, people don't have those options. So we are thankful. Today's call to worship is from the New Testament. It's the second letter to the Corinthian church, chapter 5, verses 16 and 17 from the New Living Translation. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view. How differently we know him now. I pray that's our goal. I pray that as we've been Christians, we know him differently now than when maybe we first encountered him. This means that anyone who belongs in Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. This morning, we are still going to stand together. We aren't supposed to sing together, but we can clap our hands. We can raise our hands. We can close our eyes in worship. We can hum and we can mouth the words. So I encourage you to stand and worship with us. stars and you know them by name the skies proclaim god you reign your glory shines you teach the sun when to bring a new day creation sings god you reign god you reign you say my song remains God you reign you hold my life you know my heart and you call me by name I live to say
be seated. Well, hey there, kids. Uh, it is so great that you've joined us today. I, I know there might be a couple of you joining us in our service today, uh, but I know that most of you are at home, and I'm actually recording this from home right now. Uh, and you know, all month long at Kid Zone, we're talking about friendship and how we should use our words and actions to show others that we care. Uh, and one of the great things about friendship uh, is that a friend is someone who often likes the same things that you like. Uh, they often like to do uh, the same things that you like to do. Uh, so this morning, I wanted to play a little drawing game. I'm actually using my paint app. Uh, and this game is called Favorite Things. Now, I looked online this week and I found out what some people's favorite things are from all around the world. Uh, so as I draw, uh, if you think you know what I'm drawing, maybe drawing some of those favorite things, uh, you can let us know in the chat. Kids, tell your parents to, uh, to type it in uh, and so everyone can see uh, that you have guessed correctly, okay? Uh, and so to start things off, I am just going to turn on uh, our little app, paint app here. Here we go. Uh, and so here's our first item that I'm going to draw, okay? So kids, I want you to guess what it is that I'm drawing, all right? So here we go. Yes, I know some of you are probably thinking, oh, it's a tree. It's more than a tree. <clears throat> All right. So if you guessed bananas or a banana tree, then you would be right. Uh, in fact, did you know that bananas are the world's favorite fruit? Uh, in fact, 14% of all fruits sold around the world are bananas. Okay, so I'm gonna do our new thing. Here's our new thing that I'm gonna be drawing for you. Try to guess what this is, everybody, okay? What could this be, everybody? I can give you a hint. You might use this thing in school. And if anybody said a calculator, you would be right. That is probably the world's best calculator, isn't it? Um, you know, did you know that out of all the students in the world, the most favorite subject in school is math. That's right. 38% of all students say that math is their favorite. Uh, I was never that great at math, but that's so amazing. That many people love math. All right. I'm moving on to our next thing. I got two more things that we're going to do here. Okay. So here we go. Another favorite thing that we're looking at here. Okay. And I know some of you are saying what the answer is. And the answer is gardening, right? It's a picture of someone gardening. There's a rake, there's some things growing. Uh, and did you know that one of the world's favorite hobbies, that their favorite things to do to relax is to garden, spend time in a garden. It's true. Uh, now, you, if I was in the garden, I don't know if any uh, plant would live. I'm not usually very good at gardening, but it's amazing to me that people all around the world love gardening, okay? 
I'm going to do one last thing I'm going to be drawing for you here. Here we go. Let me get this ready. Add a little bit of color in here. All right. So if, kids, if you guessed that it was a tiger, then you would be right. Uh, in fact, in a survey of 73 countries and over 50,000 people, it was discovered that tigers are the world's favorite animal. Uh, you know, usually when someone starts to become your friend, um, it's because they like some of the same things that you like. But that's not really the most important thing about a friend. You know, the most important thing is that a friend is someone who actually cares about you, where they look out for you, where they help you, where they support you. Uh, and this week in our Kids Zone videos, we're going to learn about the friendship of Jonathan and David. Uh, in the Bible, uh, Jonathan showed how much he cared for his friend David. Uh, so I want to encourage you sometime later today or sometime this week, make sure you watch our Kids Zone videos. Uh, you can find the link to the videos at arlingtonwoods.ca slash kids. Uh, and also, parents, uh, every week, Christine sends out a weekly family email. Uh, you likely got it already uh, on Saturday. Uh, if you didn't, email me at ben at arlingtonwoods.ca and we'll make sure it's added to that family email list. Uh, but starting this week, we have a few discussion questions that for parents and their kids uh, to uh, discuss after they watch the weekly videos. Uh, so it'll help uh, your kids kind of think more about what they learned, what they heard in the video, and maybe how to apply it to their lives this week. So parents, I'd encourage you, check out that email and ask your kids some of those questions and just have a few minutes of discussing and chatting with them. Uh, so with that, thanks for joining us, everybody. Uh, it was great to see you today uh, and have a great week. Bye now. thing is that uh, we have virtual prayer that's happening uh, every night of the week. Uh, and so uh, you can uh, go to our, uh, uh, our um, bulletin, online bulletin page, uh, to get the information for that and to find out what dates and times that's happening. We do have something special that's happening in the way of prayer this week as well. On Thursday, September 17th, the Free Methodist Church in Canada is holding a free uh, prayer summit on Zoom uh, where there's going to be a chance to learn things about prayer and also to break into small groups and pray. Uh, and if you want more information on that, you can also visit our website. Uh, we have Catalyst Youth happening on Friday nights. Uh, this past week, we just kicked things off and that's on Zoom as well online. Uh, and it's been fun, you know, even though we can't be in the same room, it's been really great to be able to connect with each other, to talk with each other, uh, to encourage each other, to have some fun playing games and stuff like that. So if you're from grades 6 to 12, uh, I'd encourage you, I'd love to have you uh, join us uh, at Catalyst Youth Online on Fridays. Uh, next Sunday, we have a special guest speaker, uh, Jordan Hageman, will be joining us. Uh, she is one of the people who helped us kick off our whole building campaign. Uh, and next Sunday is actually the one-year anniversary of that. Uh, and I know Pastor Mike will probably mention a little bit more about that. And speaking of our building campaign, uh, we are planning on renovating this building. It's going to be happening soon. Uh, and uh, we want to encourage you to submit ideas for names that we can give the cafe area, the fellowship hall, and the youth area. Uh, and the reason why we do that is pretty much to, to help communicate those areas a little bit better. For example, if someone outside of our church comes to rent a space in the building and we say you can use the youth area, well, they're kind of like, is that appropriate for us? Like, is there a better option? And so we want to kind of rename those spaces. And if you have any ideas, submit them and you can send them to info at arlingtonwoods.ca. Uh, 
Uh, and so I encourage you to do that. Uh, and also, again, you can just check out our, our weekly bulletin uh, online uh, for any information about what's happening this week at our church. Uh, and there's one last thing I just want to mention is that registration is now open uh, for the celebration of life for Darlene Kennedy, uh, which takes place this Saturday. Uh, and there are limited spots for in-person, but I think it's going to be online as well. But all the information you can find if you go to our website and you look down at coming events and you can register there for that if you'd like to be in person uh, for that celebration of life. Um, with that, I'm going to just take the time to uh, just mention that offering. Um, if you want to give today, uh, if you're in here in person with us, uh, you can, when you're leaving, you could put um, uh, your offering in the offering plate, or you can give online uh, by just going to our website and clicking on the donate button. Uh, I just want to thank you all for giving and supporting us during this time uh, of COVID-19. Uh, I know uh, that we all really appreciate that, uh, and uh, it not only helps us have this building, but it helps us do ministry, you know, uh, to kids and teens and adults and to our community. And so we really appreciate you for that. I just want to pray for you if you are someone, you know, who has been giving. I just want to pray a, a prayer of blessing on you. Uh, and so I'm just going to do that now. God, I just thank you so much for the opportunity that we have to give. Uh, to support this church, to be a part of this church community in a tangible way uh, through giving. I thank you, God, for all that we do through those gifts, uh, how we minister to the community, minister to each other. Uh, and, and I just thank you uh, that we have the opportunity to give today. I pray you bless every single person who gives, whether it's in person, putting something in an offering plate, or who, who give online. I just pray you bless them, God. Be their provider. Be their help. Uh, and I just thank you so much for their gifts today. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. but we have many families returning to schools in different forms this year. So some are online, some are homeschooling, some are within school buildings, as well as our teachers who are also kind of nervous about everything that's going on. So today in our prayer time, we're going to pray for them as well. Would you stand with me as we pray for our church family? Jesus, we thank you that we get to be here. We thank you for your continued grace and mercy on our lives. We thank you that we have the opportunity to come on this day to worship you. So we give you all of the praise for being creator God, for being the one who has looked out with, for us from birth, for sending your son to save us. We thank you. And today we lift up to you some requests in our church family. We have just seen a video of some of the families, how they are returning to school this year. So we pray for the children that are returning to school within physical buildings and how different it may seem. We pray for anxiety that, Lord, it would be replaced by your love. Because where your love is, there is no fear. So we thank you for them. 
We thank you for the learning that's going to take place at home for parents who are also taking on this new technology, for parents who may need some patience, for parents who will want some creativity. We pray for them. We pray for safety for all of our, our children, for the children in our community. We want to pray for the teachers in our community, our teachers that are members of our congregation, teachers, parents who are now teachers. We thank you so much that they're willing to take the time to spread knowledge to the next generation. That's actually your call. You've called us all through your word to do that. And as we spread that knowledge as families, that we would also remind them over and over again of your love and of your plan for the future, a hope and a future. There are some other situations in our church family this weekend. So we, we thank you for Jean's family, that they are on the road to recovery. We thank you for your grace. We thank you that you have been with them all along in the healing process. We also want to lift up Shirley with her hip replacement and ask that you would also provide speedy recovery, a wonderful in-hospital experience, as well as care afterwards. We thank you that this has been able to happen. We lift up the celebration of life service this coming weekend and continue to pray for the Kennedy family. There are many emotions that are happening we give you glory for her life. And we pray that you would, all week, would you walk alongside the family? Would you wrap your loving arms around them and let them feel your presence every day? And now we give you this service. Our hearts open to hear from you. Our hearts thankful for who you are. Through Jesus Christ, amen. You may be seated. Uh, last week... Pastor Mike started a new series called A New Day. How many people related to that topic or that theme, A New Day? I know I did. I actually had quite a few emails and a lot of comments in different contexts of people saying, oh, it really is a new day, or this is a new day because. And many people were talking about how a new day fit into their own lives. He focused on the need for a new heart. A heart that's open to respond to God's love. And last week, I showed you a sculpture that was inspired by the passage in Ezekiel. And then during the sermon, Pastor Mike mentioned the parable of the sower. And he asked, do we have hearts that are receptive? Are our hearts a receptive path to receive what God has for us? And I got thinking during the sermon, I thought, I have another piece of art like that at home. Actually, it's my favorite. This is my favorite piece, and I apologize. Not every angle in here will have a clear view. Some people have a glare. So when you walk out today, take a look as you go past. But this is the parable of the sower. It is one of my favorites in our home because I spent a lot of time here with the Lord in this parable about 10 years ago. But the question still remains today. Are our hearts open to being a path to receive from God's love and to receive from God's word. So in saying that, we're going to read the scriptures together. And I'm going to ask you to stand again. See, and you thought you wouldn't have anything to do. Up, down. The Old Testament reading comes from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 18, verses 1 to 6 from the New Living Translation. The Lord gave another message to Jeremiah. Go down to the potter's shop and I will speak to you there. So I did, as he told me, and I found the potter working at his wheel. But the jar he was making did not turn out as he had hoped. And so he crushed it into a lump of clay and started all over. Then the Lord gave me this message. Oh, Israel, can I not do to you as this potter has done to his clay? As the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand. Amen. You may be seated. Thanks, Caroline. That was uh, great. Um, thank you for doing that. And th thank each of you for being here today. 
I think we're struggling a little bit with our live stream to YouTube this morning, but uh, we'll, we'll continue to work on those things. There are a number of volunteers that are behind the scenes who are working on technical things. There are a number of volunteers that were here early this morning. Um, I, I think if you would just give them your support this morning and just, uh, you can clap, that's okay. No shouting, no hoo -hoo, none of that. Just, uh, just your uh, clapping and your appreciation. When, when you uh, see some of these folks, when you come in, if you just let them know how much you appreciate them, that would be wonderful. We're all kind of learning uh, new technology. None of us ever thought that we would be doing TV production. Um, certainly uh, not, not at this stage. Uh, it, wasn't in our, it wasn't in our master plan, um, but here we are. We are doing our, we're doing our, our level best. So there's a couple things I want to mention to you before I get into the heart of the message today. First one is, is that I just wanted to mention to you that next Sunday, we, as has already been mentioned, will be our New Horizons campaign. We'll be talking about that. We're uh, really excited to have Jordan back with us. She'll actually physically be here, and we're hoping to patch in her dad, uh, Reverend uh, Pastor uh, David uh, Hazard. We're hoping to patch him in and, uh, so that he can give us some encouragement as well. They are super excited about where we are in terms of the money that we've raised so far. The fact that we are, we'll hear the number next week, but I think we're, we're getting close to 600,000 towards our million. And uh, so we're, we're very excited about that. Next week, we will give opportunity for those that are joining us uh, and uh, people that are here this morning. If you haven't contributed to our campaign, there's two more years that we want to give towards this. A total of three for those that started last year. We want to give others the opportunity to give towards that. We want for you to prayerfully consider what it might be that you would give towards the campaign. Uh, when we started out, we thought that we needed to raise 1.1 1 .1 or, or uh, a million. And uh, since then, because of COVID, we have added into what we want to do a touchless, uh, our touchless washrooms so that it uh, be a little more hands-free uh, for those that are in there. And uh, there are um, more um, accessibility things that we think that we should be putting in. And so we think the number is closer to 1.1 right now. Also, the other, the other thing that we're including in that is, is that just right now the supplies, because of COVID, are more expensive than what we had first anticipated. So we need to raise really... Uh, at least another hundred thousand. So we are we're asking those that have been that have joined us recently uh, whether they would consider giving over the next two years. We will, if you're interested in that, we have a packet that we will be sending out next week. And uh, those that are joining us on the on live stream will be sending those out as well um, to those folks. So we're uh, we're super excited. Finally, we get a chance to do this uh, to get our rooms back in order, and so we're we're pretty excited about that. Uh, leaving this morning, I, last week everything was ended and, they, and people were sort of, well, what do we do now? So uh, our usher, uh, Vanna, I mean Paul Bloomfield, he will be moving into place back where, where Pierre is. And so this side here will leave first and then up here to the front, you'll exit this way here. And then the front over here, starting with Jean, you'll start and you'll move out across here and out that door there. I know that some of you this morning when you came... You're probably in a bit of a rush. I'm, I'm glad that you're out of your pajamas. I'm very thankful for that this morning. Well, some of you may be in pajamas. I can hardly see you, but oh, I can see you well. We have for you a cinnamon bun. Because we thought maybe at, when you were at church in the morning, you have been for the last six months, you probably had a coffee and a cinnamon bun. So as you leave this morning, we have a cinnamon bun for you. So for those are... Yeah. No, really. Seriously. There's a cinnamon bun for you. That's wonderful. And next Sunday, we, ha we have a little treat for you as well. So, uh, uh, but you'll have to wait to hear all about that. So, that is, uh, that is it. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. I'm not sure. Um, I wanted to mention two more things real quickly. One is, is that yesterday, the Free Methodist Church in Canada met as part of its general conference, the delegates, both lay and clergy, met to vote on some um, procedural things and some important things. Continue to pray for the Free Methodist Church in Canada, across our land and around the world. 
Um, a lot of great work being done there and great progress. I mention that because our bishop is here this morning. Cliff? No, I don't. Uh, it, was a, it, was a, it, was, um, it was a great day in terms of uh, being able to move forward on some things, so uh, continue to pray for them. And also what was mentioned, go to our webpage and you can be a part of the prayer time that was mentioned earlier. Also, I just really want to encourage you. Some of you joined us at the beginning of COVID. You were online almost every night when we were praying. Our numbers are down now around 9 or 10. I would really encourage you to make Tuesday night, Tuesday night, your time of prayer, where we as the church come together to pray. You can join the other days. That would be great. But Tuesday, between 7 and 8, that is our prayer time for our church. And I really encourage you as, as the church body for us to come together and let's, let's really come together in, in, in numbers. This is important because our church has made the decision that we will not be having business meetings. We're going to encourage you as small groups not to meet during that time frame of Tuesday between 7 and 8. We're saying that prayer is important and we need to come together collectively to pray for our city, to pray for our country, to pray for this world. And um, so I'm just really encouraging you, if you could just join us in our Zoom, that would be absolutely wonderful. We had great numbers to begin with, and I um, just really want to encourage you to, be, to come be part of that. When I came to faith as a teenager, I knew that something happened inside of me. I knew the next, I, I knew the moment that I invited Jesus into my heart. I, I knew that when I said, you know what, I don't want to be the one that leads my life, that I need Jesus in my heart. When I recognized that I was to the place that I was a sinful person and I, I was distant from God, I knew that there was some disconnect there, but I didn't know how to get back. And when it was made evident to me and God spoke to my heart, I rushed to the altar that night at Wesley Acres and I gave my heart to Jesus and I knew that I was changed. And the part that was really cool about that for me was is that following, I, which I was not prepared for in the days and weeks that happened afterwards, there were people that came to me and said, you are changed. You are different. There's something that has happened to you. You seem to be a new person. Can you remember the time when you said yes to Jesus? Can you continue to remember the times when you continue to say yes to Jesus? Did you say yes to Jesus this morning? Are you allowing him to make you a new creation today? What difference really has Jesus made in your life? If I was to go and to interview the people that are around you, the places where you have been, the churches you have attended, ask people there, so-and-so, what, can, what can you tell me about them? What, do you think that they know Jesus? Do they act like they know Jesus? What difference has Jesus made? In our world, there would be many people that would say, you know, the church... People that, you know, that go to church. I'm not so sure that I, I like all the things that they do. Some of it is maybe they feel guilty, but maybe it is that they don't see much difference in us. We're talking about a new day. Last, time, last week we talked about uh, a new heart, and we need a new heart. We need a heart to be transplanted. We need a, a new heart transplanted into us, a spiritual heart. Because our hearts can grow cold, and they can grow hard. Today we're talking about being a new creation and the fact that we need Jesus in us so that we can be different than the culture around us because the, the world needs Jesus. The world needs to see Jesus in us in all ways. I thought this passage of scripture that we looked at this morning that uh, Carlene read for us talking about the potter and and how the potter, uh, Jer Jeremiah, gets this vision and he sees this. And he sees the potter working with the clay. And you know what? I love the Purple Bricks uh, commercial. Have you seen that one? 
where it's uh, you know the uh, guy's working with his uh, with the with the pottery in front of him and the things going around there's a number of people that are beside him and they're all they're all working together and the one says you know um purple bricks you ever use purple bricks well no i haven't and then um she says well they 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 have no commission and he just he just stops what he's doing and the next shot is the person that's sitting beside is just the clay just is shooting right straight across because he just takes his fist and just pounds it this picture of the potter and the clay is he's working with the pot and he sees that there's something wrong and he stops what he's doing and he remakes it. He recreates it. Have you ever wished in your life to have a redo or a do-over? Not a comb-over. Like I, I'm moving towards that, I'm sure. Actually, there was the one time when my hair was cut too long And then when the wind blew, it was sort of hanging down here. I looked like my father. Like it was just really, really weird. I'm not talking about a comb over. I'm talking about a a do over. If a a pot doesn't turn out the way that the potter has thought, he, he crushes it. And he starts over. And God tells Jeremiah, that's what I want to do with you. I, I want to do, I, I want to give you a do-over. Today we're going to talk about do-overs. In Christ, your new creation, you are a brand new person. That's what the scriptures talk about. Do you feel like a new person today? Maybe there's a weight of the world draws us away and moves us in a different direction, but do, do you feel like you're a new creation, a brand new person? May you today, as we walk through this and as we prepare to go in a little while, may may you sense God lifting you up where you are. Great passage of scripture, one that I memorized when I was in college. It taught, uh, it's a Second Corinthians chapter five, verse seventeen. You can follow along in U version. Um, I don't know whether in our in our screen we had given you the password for our for our internet here. But we do have that, and if it's not on, we'll make sure that it gets put up there. Maybe, perhaps not this morning, but next time. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, and the new has come. If anyone. That's you. That's me. If you're in Christ, you're a new creation. The, The old is gone, and the new has come. Out with the old, in with the new. Paul uses this phrase 82 times in his letters. It it means to be in relationship to Christ. It it means to be a follower of Christ, to to believe in him, and to trust him with your life. To trust him with your life, both in the good things and in in the bad things. It means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old is gone the new has, has come. For those of you who are married in marriage, I, I belong to my wife and, and she belongs to me. We're in this committed relationship with each other. Because I'm with her, there are certain things that are true for me, including that I'm living a new and different life. Things have changed since my single days. I used to be able to do certain things when I was single. I made my own decisions. I was my own man. Not anymore. I'm living for someone else. I could easily be selfish. Still can be selfish. But when you're in relationship, it means that you are connected at the hip and things are different. I just want to give a shout out to Abby. Abby Fletcher, we know you're getting married next weekend, next Saturday. Congratulations. And there were like millions that are viewing today that are just wishing you and praying for you that you just have an awesome day next, next uh, weekend. But all of us know that there's more to making uh, a marriage than just the wedding day. And that there's lots in front of you, lots of great moments for you. So live in the moment.
enjoy these days leading up. And as you move out into those days, we are praying for you. When you are in Christ, Paul says these things are true of you. You are a, you're a new creation. You should have that in your notes. You're a new creation. You're made new. You are dead to sin and alive to God. Things to the past and you are alive to God. You are f- fully forgiven and free from condemnation. You are a child of God. You are blessed, you are adopted, you are chosen, you are loved. All of these things are true in Christ. When you're in relationship with Jesus, you are a new creation, a new person in Christ. It's time for us to walk into that and to embrace that in our lives. How do we do that? How do we be made new? There are two words. That you'll see in your notes. You are and you do. You are and you do. The first one is is that you are a new creation. When you are in Christ, you are a new creation. As I said before, if a potter doesn't like what is being formed in his hands, they start over. Out of the same clay. A new creation. Same clay. New pot. When we follow Jesus, we become a new creation. Same clay, new pot. But you know, I'm still me. I bring along with myself my personality. uh, The same family, the same body. But I'm a new person. God plants himself in me. He, as we will find out, gives us his spirit. There are some things though, and that change. I'm different. What are some of those things? If I'm a new creation, what is new? I don't know whether you know or not, but the word new comes up over 50 times in the New Testament. The first one that we're going to talk about briefly is is that a new Lord. You are a new creation. You are, you have a new Lord from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 14 to 15. You have a new Lord. You have a new leader. You are saying, you know what? I don't want to lead myself. I want God to lead me through Jesus Christ. I want Jesus to be the center of my life. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 14 to 15 says, Either way, Christ's love controls us. Since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we have all died to our old life. He died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. What do you do? Maybe you've experienced this or not, but what do you do when someone loves you enough to die so that you can live? What do you do when someone gives selflessly so that you can have the kind of life that you've wanted? There were times when, you know, I look back on my life in a very small way and I see the sacrifices of my parents. Very humble, not rich. They gave of themselves over and over again so that I could have a life. As parents, you probably recognize that. You you would give your life. So that your children could could move forward. We give our lives so that others can have a future. Perhaps you've seen the movie Saving Private Ryan. It's kind kind of gory. It's about a soldier, Private Ryan, whose three brothers are killed in action just before he parachutes into occupied France. As part of the D Day invasion in World War II, there are a platoon of soldiers. Who are led by Captain John Miller. And they are to go in. And they are to bring Private Ryan out. So that he can return home alive. Most of the platoon dies in this process. In this mission. And the dying captain clutches Private Ryan's shirt. And he says earn this. Earn this. They have given their life so that you could live. 
In the final scene, years later, a much older Private Ryan visits Captain Miller's grave in France and weeping wonders if he was worthy of what Captain Miller did for him. Did he live a life that was worthy of the sacrifice made for him? I think that in response, anyone would have towards someone who died that they could live. Wouldn't that be the response? But there's two differences, really, or many differences between what happened in that scene and what Jesus did for us. Jesus didn't say, earn this. Jesus said, this is a gift. When he gave his life, he said, this is a gift for you. There's nothing that you can do to earn it. I'm doing this because I love you. I don't know about you, but for me, that's someone that I want to follow. There's no way that I could ever earn that. And maybe that's what Private Ryan was feeling when he went. I did not deserve the fact that you, Captain Miller, would give your life for me. Next important thing is, is that Jesus didn't stay dead. Jesus came back to life again. And again, because of that, that's someone that I can follow. You have a new Lord. You're saying that I don't want to be the leader of my life. I want Jesus to be the leader of my life. I want him to be the one that controls my life. And so therefore, I follow him. I have him in my heart. You're living for Jesus now. You're a new creation. The second thing is, is when we talk about this new creation, is you have a new relationship with God. A new relationship with God. Jesus says that he, he's making a new covenant with us. Now, this uh, covenant is an agreement between two parties based on mutual promises. God had covenant with Israel, and now he makes covenant through Jesus Christ. This new relationship with God is, is based on what Jesus did. If you've been around the church very long, you know that in in uh, the scriptures, when Jesus is having the Last Supper with his disciples, one of the last conversations that he'll have with them before they go out to uh, Gethsemane, he talks to them and he says, this cup, the juice that he had, the wine that he had, is a new covenant in my blood which is poured out for you. I I'm about to go give my life so that you can have life. So that you can have a new relationship with God. This new relationship that we have. This new creation is based on what Jesus did for us. The fact that he gave his life for us. And whenever we have communion together. It is a reminder that his body was given for us. Dead and buried. Which we'll talk about in a moment. But his blood was given. So that our sins could be forgiven. A new creation. It is a new day. Another thing that comes from this new creation is the fact there's new power. You're not living in your own strength alone. When we face temptation, this new creation, this new power comes to us. Romans chapter 7 verse 6 says, Now we can serve God, not in the old way of obeying the letter of the law, but in a new way of, of living in the Spirit. He lives in us. We're not trying to do this on our own anymore. We are a new creation. We have been refashioned. We've been remade. He empowers us to do what God wants for us to do. And we don't have to continue to live and wallow in that place of guilt. Because God makes us new. And the Holy Spirit comes in and helps us to live that. The new creation, what is the other thing? A new life. A new life. Some of you are experiencing new life. Some people say, you know what, I, I know this thing about Jesus, I know this thing about God, but I'm just going to wait. Why wait? Why put that off? When we talk about eternity, it's not talking so much about the thing that's going to, we're going we're gonna to be forever in heaven. It talks about eternity and living in that eternal perspective now we talk about new life you have the opportunity of living a new life right now why wait new life 
when Jesus rose from the dead, did I read that passage of scripture? I did not. Romans chapter 6 verse 4. That's from the previous one. New life. For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. Are you living a new life? I'd love just to be able to spend a little bit of time and just find out how the new life is going for you. What are some of the things that God is doing in your life? Where are the God moments for you where God shows up and you see wonderful things happen? That's what happens in the lives of those that are a new creation. Who have had a heart transplant. Who are living a new creation. Because God makes us new. There is this new life that comes with that. We don't live the way we used to live. When Christ rose from the dead, he, he began a new life. His, his old life had ended. He walked away from that. He left the grave clothes in the tomb. And he came out of that gloriously free. And some of us, as we think about where we came from and what held us down, this chair is going there. The, what held us down, when we take a look at that and the things that bound us, the chains that held us, as we look back at that, some of your conversion stories are just right off the charts in terms of what God freed you from. But look back to that moment and see where you were and where you are and the fact that new life has entered you. There is something else that is pulsing through your veins that makes you who you are today through this new life. You are a new creation. And because of that, you have a new life. You have new opportunities to be all that God has for you. Because... Christ was raised from the dead with the power of the Father. And the same power that raised Jesus from the dead can raise you from the place where you are and give you what it is that you need. All of this, as was before, the new covenant talks about the, uh, the sacrament of communion. The new life talks about the sacrament and the symbolism of baptism. And if you haven't been baptized, I encourage you to think about that. The symbolism. Your old life has died. It was nailed to the cross with Jesus Christ. And you tell me, what do you do with a dead person? What do you do with a dead person? You bury them. You bury them. And, and that, that old life was buried, dead, and buried... Your old life was dead and buried. Your old you is buried with Christ. But when you go down into the water, you're buried. And you come up what? A new person. Hello? Amen. I see you nodding your heads. I see your eyes sparkling. I, yeah, okay. Right now you have new life. Like Jesus, it's an eternal life. Even though you'll die, you'll live forever. And it starts today. It starts the moment when you said yes. Jesus described it as abundant life. It was a life so full, so abundant that you have enough for yourself and plenty to share. If anybody ought to be happy, anybody ought to be moving forward, anybody that should be abundant with what they have, the resources that they have, it ought to be followers of Jesus Christ. And it ought to flow out of us. That's the kind of life that he is calling us to. Not miserly. Not to hoard these things towards ourselves. We are dead to the things of the past and alive to the things of the future. And God is calling his people, especially now, to move forward. One of the things that I wanted just to briefly mention to you with the, with the different organizations that we're helping during this time of COVID is, is that a number of the organizations are making all kinds of structural shifts. I was with Ken McLaren from um, Ottawa Inner City Mission and he was saying that they, 
there's been about 40% of their staff have shifted. Some have left. Some have had to resign because of other things that have come up in their lives. And there's all kinds of things that are happening out there. And so we as a church, we're trying to discern how do we best support these individual ministries. We want to be, we want to be generous in all that we do. And you're helping us to be generous during this time. You're a new creation. Another thing that comes because of that is a new start. My life with Jesus is so radically new and different from my life before that Jesus himself describes it as being born again. <clears throat> when I, I think I've mentioned this, I wasn't saved from, from alcohol and drugs. I, I wasn't involved in that. I'm not saying I'm any better than anybody. I, I was the worst of the worst when it came to um, sarcasm. And putting people down. I, I was really bad. I think because it made me feel good. And because I could get a laugh. Do you know most humor. Sarcasm especially. Always. Always. Comes at the cost of someone else. There are times in my life. When that part. That I thought was dead. Comes to life. And it raises its ugly head. And there are times when I just have to, I have to, I ha just have to sort of suck it up. And I just have to shut up. I don't know what it is in you, the old nature that comes back to life every now and again. But for me, that's one of those, that's one of those things that comes. I need to be, I need to be born again and again and again. Refreshed, renewed. I, you know what? When we talk about um, sac we, we, um, you know, daily sacrifice, I, I find myself crawling, wanting to crawl off a living sacrifice. I keep crawling off the altar and going back to my old way. I need God constantly in my life to help me to be what I said that I would be with his help. It's a new start. Any golfers here? A few of us? When, when you play golf, there are those who I, I like to golf with who give you mulligans. <laughs> mulligans means that when you, when you go to hit the ball, you miss the ball and it goes somewhere where it should, like over in the woods or in the water. Or you just miss it all completely. And they say, don't worry about it. Right, Grant? They say, don't worry about it. Just take a mulligan. So a mulligan means you just take another golf ball, which I always go to the tee box with. I always have another golf ball in my pocket. People don't think that's right, but I do anyway. So I take it because I think I'm going to miss. So I put it down, and then I, I hit it again. It means that I have the opportunity to do a do-over or um, opportunity to continue. But you need to know that you don't see mulligans when there's tournament. You don't see the professionals using mulligans. It's this grace thing that happens to us. This new start where they say, you know what? You kind of screwed up there. This is quite regular. You kind of screwed up there. We're going to give you a mulligan. That's what Jesus does for us. That's what God does for us. He says, you know what? I've, I've seen how you play. I, I see what you do. I just want you to know, dear player of golf, dear friend of mine, dear child of God, today, I want you to take a mulligan. I just want you to know that you can start over. Pick up the ball, put another ball down, and let's do it again. I love that about our Heavenly Father. He gives us a new start. He also plants in us a new mind. Another part of the creation, Romans 12 too. You get a new mind. He works in us to reprogram if you continue to fill your mind with bad things, negative things, things that lead you away from God, you're going to be led away from God. But if you continue to move towards him, you will grow towards him. Some translations say, let God transform you by the renewing of your mind. Romans 12, 2, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way that you think. Oh, there's so many days at the end of the day, I kind of, I go, Father... Help me to think like you think. Change my mind. Work 
in my mind. I need that. First, you are a new creation. Second, you do put on a new self. You do put on a new self. Ephesians 4, 22 to 24. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to, to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Paul is, Paul is likening this to a change of clothes. Take, take off the old, the dirty, the stinky, the whatever it is. And put on a new set of clothes. I can choose to put off my old life and my old behaviors, my old thoughts. I can choose to, to put on a new self with new thoughts and new behaviors. He, he doesn't force that on us. It, it's up, up to us to call for it. The old me, I'm done with. The new me, through God, I embrace. May that be true for you. Perhaps you've had the, the privilege of of seeing the iconic stage production, Le Miserable. It's a great story of redemption. Jean Valjean is an escaped convict. He is staying with the bishops at his home. He's found shelter and comfort there. But Valjean repays his, con his kindness of the bishop by stealing his silver in the middle of the night. He's captured by the police. They return him to the bishop. Valjean expects to be returned to prison, but the, the bishop insists that he gave Valjean the silver and chides him for forgetting the candlesticks. The police say, so what he has said is true? Yes, it's true. After the police, they, so the police let him go. After the police leave, the bishop looks Valjean in the eyes and he says, don't forget. Don't ever forget you've promised to become a new man. Valjean, trembling, makes the promise and with utter humility asks, why are you doing this? The bishop places his hand on Valjean's shoulders as an act of blessing, and he declares, Jean, Valjean, my brother, you no longer belong to evil. With this silver, I have bought your soul. I've ransomed you from fear and hatred. Now I give you back to God. Valjean goes away a new man. He lives a new life as an outstanding citizen. And as he faces choices, he consistently chooses the new self, the new Jean. He takes off the old self and he puts on the new. Jesus has bought you. He has ransomed you from evil. And he's given you back to God. You are a new creation. Put off the old self and put on the new. I have a couple questions for you this morning as you go into the rest of your day. What are the ways that you are living out the new life? You've been freed from who knows what only you and God know. And since that point forward, even to today, what are you doing with your freedom? What are the ways that you're living out the new life that God has given you? Something to ponder. You're a new creation. Is that true? Are you a new creation? Are there some parts that maybe feel a little older than new? In these moments, in a few moments, we're going to sing together. But between now and then and even later today, your new creation. What parts need to be renewed again? You are a new creation. Who would notice? <clears throat> Who would notice that about you? And perhaps you're here or you are joining us. Have you started the new life? 
Have you been to that place where you've said yes to Jesus and you want to follow him with all of your heart, with your mind, your soul, and your strength? Love your neighbor as yourself? Are you at that place where you have said, you know what, I I don't want to continue to live this life of sinfulness, this old life that I feel and experience inside. I want this new life that we're talking about today. I want to be this new creation. The Bible makes it clear that there is a separation between God and us. There's this great chasm that's often talked about. This sinfulness that separates us. The things that we do that we know that we shouldn't do. And the things that we don't do that we know that we should do. And it separates us. And that's why Jesus came to build this bridge and this chasm between us and him. God says, I love you and I, I, I want to give, I, I want to have this relationship with you. But this, this sin somehow separates us. Talk about social distance. It creates this distance between us. I want to I want to build a bridge to this that is in this chasm. And that's why Jesus came to so that he would give his life so that your sins could be forgiven. Sins a big deal to God. So much so that he would send his son Jesus to die on a cross for us and that's the Easter story. But you know, it doesn't end there. Jesus went into the tomb and he rose again. He he came out of the tomb and he lives with he's he's with God now. Because Jesus died, was raised back to life again, and because he came to give himself for us, we're able to have new life with God. It's just simply saying, you know what, I'm sorry for the things I've done, and just say, Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. And just saying, would you just come into my life? I, I, there's times when I, make, I just screw up. I, just, I wish things were different, but every time I try, I just can't seem to get it right. Invite Jesus in to your heart and into your life. And he will help you to live the life that you desire. The life that you are wanting for as you move forward. I'm just going to ask us to bow our heads in these moments. Just with our heads bowed and our eyes closed and as you are around your screens... In this worship time, it very well may be that some of those questions resonate with you. Maybe the one that is the deepest for you is that one where you just need to invite Jesus into your heart. Maybe you've been putting it off for a long, long time, but to, and today's the day. You just sense, you know, of all the things that are happening around, you're calling my name today. You're calling me into this life of, uh, of being a new creation. I, I've known for a long time that life isn't what it was supposed to be. And you're calling me right now into that place of oneness before you. And so, Lord, I just pray in these moments that for those people that need to reach out and say, I need Jesus in my life, I want to turn my life over to him, that they would feel free to do that. Lord, just be with them today. And thank you for hearing our prayer. Thank you for helping us to be made new. Thank you for all that you're doing in us. Thank you that you make us a new creation. And I just pray that you would just continue to work in our hearts and our lives in the days ahead. For we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm just going to ask you to stay seated and listen to these words and reflect on them. You can close your eyes as a prayer read along and partway through we'll stand amazing
As we go this morning, <clears throat> receive the benediction. Receive the benediction that God loves you and cares for you. That he wants you to succeed. And as you go today, know that you are a new creation. Go live for him. All of God's people said, amen. God bless you.